And so we should know each other's culture mm. because then we'll like each other more and we mm. won't be afraid of each other. But if I preach it like I'm preaching to you, they'll turn the channel. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have to find a way to ease it in. You famously went from jail to judge in 15 years. Take me back to that moment where your mother visited you in jail and what ultimately sparked that move toward public policy. Having been a street youth, high school dropout in the 11th grade in and out of juvenile before being tried as an adult with a gun and um, spending nine months and receiving probation. I finally, and my mother came to visit me in my final stint in the county jail for nine months and uh, begged me to change my life and revealed to me that she had cancer. She had just been diagnosed with cancer and asked if I would change before she died. And if nothing else will change you, uh, that will. I know you probably get it all the time that you hear people hearing your story and it's like, wow, they get that motivation. That's the best part of this job. Uh, in addition to having fun, anybody <laughs> that watches the show, they know I have fun. Uh, and I didn't know until people started telling me, even the studio, like our second to third year on, I was trying to be like Judge Judy, mean <laughs> as hell. And then the studio said, well, Judge, seems like you got a lot of humor. Be who you are. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I began to just be who I am and entertaining quips <laughs> comes to me and laughing and having fun. Uh, but I also inject social commentary mm -hmm. and as you say, inspiration and uh, give a little wisdom and open the eyes of those who might uh, need a little more information and exposure, but you got to entertain first to get the people to watch. Because people won't receive just information. Like the fact that you, you wrap it in humor, you wrap it in social commentary, like it's, it's a good way of receiving the information. We all know that people get uncomfortable, both African Americans and uh, white society get uncomfortable talking about race because there's this sense that uh, one is angry and one might be angry and mm -hmm. the other is fearful and uncomfortable. Well, I'm able to do that like comedians do. And in effort to tell people that we're all the same, let's come together. Mm -hmm. You're, the black culture, we do things like this. White culture do things like that. Latino culture does this. Asian culture. And so we should know each other's culture mm -hmm. because then we'll like each other more. And we won't be afraid of each other. But if I preach it like I'm preaching to you, they'll turn the channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have to find a way to ease it in. Give you an example. Uh, uh, it was a woman who appeared before the court and said that she had met the defendant, her ex, at a concert. And mm -hmm. they met in the concert and went out. And I say, y'all go to concerts to meet dates and to <laughs> meet people? I say, black folks don't do anything but yell and fuss <laughs> and, and tell everybody to sit down. I say, I say and then they, they're singing. Uh, you can't hear because they're singing next to the song. So I'm pointing out that difference. It's a reality, mm -hmm. but I was able to do it in a humorous way. Yeah. And people were laughing because some people knew it was true. Yeah. And if they didn't know, now you do know. So that's <laughs> those type of things I try and inject. So let's talk about American Gangster Trap Queens. Mm -hmm. So why is it so important to give women like Tony So Welch a platform to tell their stories? Well, you know, it's um, I found, as you say, the stories of uh, overcoming the uh, odds in the inner city um, is something that other people need to see. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to see a cautionary tale with an inspirational ending, but because I've received those type of compliments over the years and people have told me I helped change their life. Well, I said, let's get some women. We can show their journey from uh, to overcoming the streets and uh, uh, the life of crime and overcoming it, showing as a cautionary tale that all of us have been to prison ultimately, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. But then there's a day after prison that you can begin to change your life and turn from that and perhaps not return. And so that's what uh, the concept is, a cautionary tale with inspirational ending mm -hmm. that will relate to the people who need it. Tony said, I really, I like talk, I spoke with her a couple months ago and mm -hmm. it's crazy to see where she was and how, and where she is now and how 
motivated she is to helping those incarcerated. And yes. I, I really love seeing those redemption stories on the show. Yeah. yeah. And while the show is friendly, it does shed light on systemic and racial disparities. What's mm -hmm. one thing you want to make sure the viewers know? Yes, that uh, under education and they're in the inner city um, create and poverty creates a uh, uh, an environment where many of the people feel a sense of hopelessness, despair, hopelessness in the sense that I can't get out of my condition because I don't have the tools because this public school system is failing me and won't give me the tools. Oddly enough, people in the inner city living in poverty, they have great common sense and they know uh, when they've been neglected and abandoned by America and that's their uh, belief, that's their feeling, that's their general perception of their condition when they're when we're living in poverty that a society has abandoned us mm -hmm. and society has not educated us equally this society is based on competition and mm -hmm. so if you are undereducated and the privileged are uh, over educated or mm -hmm. receive an excellent education you're out of you're at a competitive advantage so mm -hmm. my advice is to empower yourself through an education and that will allow you to overcome your obstacles by creating options for yourself and then don't give up when they close the door of opportunity because that's what happened to me and that may happen to you i didn't give up i didn't punk out i was a street guy i was a tough guy i didn't stop being tough when i uh went to college and this mm -hmm. bar exam told me that they won't give me opportunity i stayed tough and i kept appealing until that door came down and that would be my advice to those uh listening and who need a little of that direction to overcome their obstacles do you have like a favorite trap queen this season this season it would probably be tonisha mm -hmm. because i've known her for a number of years and know the circle that she's ran in for some 40 years. What are you most looking forward to sharing with fans this season? Well, I want them to see um, the journey to recovery for many of the litigants that come on. You know, people, uh, my tagline among people who like the humor of the show is, I call everybody a crackhead. crackhead, crackhead. <laughs> so I quite frankly do that to get you millennials. That's not that funny to y'all. That's like kind of funny. <laughs> and so uh, uh, in that vein, it's because a lot of people come here and they are addicted to drugs. And mm -hmm. the first 10 years, it was crack. Uh, after that, it's uh, last 13, it's been opioids and heroin. And and so I'm able to play with crack a little because that's uh, it's not as sensitive because mm -hmm. there's not as many people addicted. The challenge is opioids. And I don't play with that a whole lot because mm -hmm. people are suffering. And so why spread suffering? And But yeah, the drug journey. And that is we send people to rehab. Uh, last week, I uh, committed to paying off personally the college uh, loan that is keeping a young man from finishing his last semester in college. And so those are the type of things folks are going to see in addition to our regular entertainment and fun. That's amazing. And I'm just looking forward to seeing more and seeing you highlight these wonderful women on the show. Are you looking forward to seeing more crackheads? <laughs> so you can laugh and have fun. <laughs> no, the, what's funny, when I watch your show, that the Judge Mathis, like, I will say you're the only show that me, my mom, and my dad will all agree on watching. It's the only show. There you go. <laughs> so you, you can, I can honestly say you appeal to a variety of people, ages, demographics, everything. Excellent. All <laughs> right. That's good news. Thank you.